Artists, creatives, and designers, welcome to Dream Aloud Art, the podcast where creatives are educated on seeing value in themselves and their creations. Presented to you by RTA, respecttheartist.com. I'm your host, fellow creative and friend, Electra B. Frederick. Let's go. What is going on, artists? What is going on? How are y'all doing? So, ooh, deep breath in and out. You ready? Are you ready? Because you you clicked on this episode for a very special, unique, tailor-made reason that only you, only you would know why. Only you would know why you clicked on this. Maybe there's something that resonates with you, with the idea of a general artist, right? Maybe there's something that resonates with you for the idea of a specialist artist is what I call it. So what we're going to talk about, as y'all know, I refer to good old Merriam Webster, 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 (laughs) Merriam Webster's dictionary and thesaurus you know let me give you a little little backstory here when i was a kid pick an age i I can't tell you what age but when i was a kid and i was in school we were learning i don't know maybe it was language arts class whatever the situation was and we had to reference a thesaurus and i was like a thesaurus like what oh this is so cool oh my gosh (laughs) so all these other words um that were closely related to other words that I've always used, right? Or at that time I had always used. So I love the the thesaurus. I love synonyms. Um, I can even appreciate antonyms and all of that, right? Continuing, (laughs) I just went down memory lane for a moment. Continuing, we're going to dive into the definition of general and specialist so you can understand what direction we're moving in in this conversation now i took a moment to look around my microphone over here i just wanted to make sure it was the right setting okay so on my end it has been raining all day which is which is a blessing you know um it's refreshing the earth i'm taking it all in and it has been dark and dim outside all day and it's been so relaxing so relaxing it's like i promise i got enough sleep but at the same time I feel like I want to take a nap again. Anyway, so let's do it. Let's do it. Y'all know I have the uh, thesaurus right in front of me. So we can uh, have, we can all start from the same place with the definition, right? This isn't about what you think general means or how I'm going to use it. It isn't about what I just think. We're going to use a reference and we're going to start from there. Okay. That's going to be our, our, um, starting point so let's look at what it says again merriam webster's thesaurus what it says about other words for general general as in broad now as i call off these words i i want you to to answer in your mind if these words have applied to you as an artist and then of course i'm going to give you a an example of a situation where you may have gotten yourself caught up in this idea of being a general artist. And then I'm, of course, I'm going to expand on what I always promote to artists out here. And that is to be a specialist. I promote that all day, every day, do what you want. You know, you got free will. It's your world. Rock it out. You know, if you want to, you know, explore anything you want to explore, you have permission to do that. Um, In my case, I work with artists who want to sell their art. And in order to sell their art somewhere in, in somewhere along the lines, they have to show a consistent uh, body of work. And so, you know, that's where I'm at with it. Okay. (laughs) Let me just get started because I want to say so much more. (laughs) Um, But anyway, here we go. So other words for the word general, broad, wide, expansive, Let's see, where's one? I saw one earlier. Overall, vague, vague. Now, hold on, let's rewind. Let, let's rewind. Imagine, let's, let's, 
let's use vague let's say vague artist doesn't that sound like that just sounds like oh man like that's <laughs> That sounds like you're kind of floating in the air and you have not grounded yourself. You know, you haven't just like planted yourself. It's like this, again, this is not a judgment session. I have done, I have tried, experimented, and really had a lot of fun with a lot of mediums. Okay. So this is a conversation that is mainly geared toward the artist who wants to be able to sell their work, who wants to show a consistent body of work, who needs that. They need that, um, the guideline, they need a point of destination. And that's the context that we're speaking on today. Okay. If you do art for a hobby or you enjoy, um, going into different mediums, again, I respect that because I'm the same way. If you saw my studio, you would see, oh, wow. Like I've, you know, I experiment with a lot of things. I could be doing resin. I could be doing watercolor ink. However, I'm very aware that that is not the direction of what that is selling my physical artwork. It's not the direction I'm in right now. Like that's, it's just not, you know, um, now have I done it? Yes. <laughs> okay. So we have to be, and I've been very successful at it. I've had a lot of successes with selling my art. So for me, it's the, the time that I'm in, my passion right now is leading with teaching y'all what I know. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, again, shout out to you. Shout out to you if you're doing that. We're focusing on the artist who wants to have a consistent body of work and is looking for guidance and direction because I'm an art coach. And when it comes to working with my clients, it would not behoove me to tell them, well, do whatever makes you feel good in this moment. You know, like, oh, just go, just wing it. Like, you know, that's, no. So let me continue because I can hear some of you right now. <laughs> that's, I had to respond to the, to the little handful of artists who are, uh, who are resistant to the message. Okay. Uh, let it go. It's all good. Relax. All right. This is, it's not necessary to be resistant um, with this topic. So, I went back to say a vague artist, right? Um, there are two different ways of looking at this when it comes to being a general artist. The first way that I mentioned is embracing that, embracing that they're a general artist. However, as I mentioned earlier, the clients that I work with, some of, some of the clients, because of course they have different concerns, but some of my clients um, that I've been working with they they don't feel good about it okay they don't feel good about being vague um about you know some of the other verbiage about you know i pulled up being general they don't feel fantastic about it and they know that they need some grounding and they need some direction you know they need a compass they need a destination they need a goal there's there so it's a feeling as though something is missing and those are the artist that I'm talking to right now. So that's one point of view as far as being general. I've also used the example of like a general practitioner, okay? Or, you know, say a family doctor or someone, someone who can just, you know, give you your physical, your annual physical and, you know, keep it moving. And it's like, yep, okay, cool. We're, we're good to go. But then you have the specialist, you have the specialist who specializes in one or maybe two, but I'm going to say one specific thing, one main leading uh, area of expertise. And that is, of course, we'll use the example of the doctor, a specialist. That's who you want to go to when there's a problem that you have and it, you don't need a general answer. You need some, you need very specific guidance from an expert. So let's look at, let me, and of course I have a la my laptop right in front of me here. So let's look at other words for a specialist. Ah, yes. Oh, these words. Oh, I like these words. Some of y'all like these words too. Don't act like you don't. Here we go. Ooh, consultant. Oh, hold on now. What did I say earlier? Look, I'm a consultant. So let me say this real quick too, because artists are always wondering what exactly is an art coach. 
And then what's the difference between a coach and a consultant? So a coach is someone, if you can just imagine a basketball game, uh, a coach will lay out a game plan. A coach will encourage you. A coach will make sure you're staying on track. That coach does not have to be the basketball player. I, I think that's something that causes a lot of, we. well, I'll say artists confuse themselves with that one because they're just like, well, shouldn't you be doing, what did I tell you earlier? Like that's, listen, I know when I, when I know it's time to exercise my gift, I exercise my gift. Like, and if I decide to exercise my gift outside of what you know, then I can do that. Anyone can do that, you know? So like anyone can exercise their gifts in whatever capacity they want to. I even said that earlier, right? Like if you want to be a general artist, own it. That's the thing is that some artists won't own it. They will not own it. They don't know what it is that they're trying to do here. And it's so critical. I cannot emphasize, emphasize this enough. It's so critical for you to know what are you trying to do with this art? If this art, your, your talents, your gift is meant for you and your family to enjoy, own it. But please do not own it Tuesday and then disown it the next day and say, well, how come I'm, I'm not making money doing this? I'm so sick and tired of this. And then, then, you know, after going through a whole series of emotions within 12 hours, you feel differently the next day. It's like, you know, I don't know about that. That sounds like you might, might need to examine your emotional state, examine your mental state. That's no shame, no shame, no judgment. I've been there. I get it. You know, do the self work, do the inner work, see a therapist. If anything, I feel like our society is cheering on um, making sure that your mental health is, is well and that you are sound in yourself. So that's what I'm referring to is when when there's this whole back and forth tennis match going on in the mind, in the spirit, in the heart. And it's like, you don't don't do that. You you have to own whatever it is that you're trying to do. So let's continue. <laughs> I know I, I started telling you about the difference between an art coach and a consultant. Um, and let me bring that sentence or that subject to a close. So a consultant is what I just mentioned with these other words with a specialist. Okay. That means they, they are a specialist. They are well seasoned in their field. Uh, how, and to the point that they can advise, they can advise, um, they can get paid for what they know. And so here are some other words for a specialist. So we have consultant, professional, proficient, expert, scholar, guru. Come on now. This is what I tell y'all. Listen, you, here's a question that just popped up. I know this popped up in somebody's mind because it came to me. So that must mean somebody has this question or has something to say about it, right? What exactly am I a specialist in? Like some of y'all are asking yourself that. What, what? I mean, like, what am what am I a specialist in? I mean, I don't really know. Like, I mean, it sounds like somebody had to go like, you know, formal education and, you know, eight different schools and a doctorate. Mm, that kind of feels like you, you want, you want it to be complicated. Here's what you specialize in, dear artists. You specialize in you. You are an expert in you and you will continue to grow in your expertise come come on somebody somebody just hollered in the back of the room i heard it i heard it you are a specialist an expert a virtuoso a master you are proficient in your existence you see no one else on the planet and other planets <laughs> no one else has experienced what it's like to be you. And the sooner you grab the bull by the horns with that, the better. This is why I always, you know, I always say that you have to remember and continue to remember and be open to remembering who you are. Do you know who you are? Come on. Do you want to know? You are a connoisseur, a guru, a wizard, a maestro, a counselor. I don't know about that counselor. That, that didn't sound that fancy. <laughs> that didn't sound that fancy. But you're a specialist in you. Now, let's get a little more specific when it comes to being a specialist artist, what I was referring to earlier, okay? A specialist artist, or in the sense of art, 
is an artist who does put most of their energy into one or two mediums. If not one or two mediums, they have a consistent uh, use of mediums. So if it's a mix, if they're into creating pieces that are mixed media, if you will, then they consistently use those mediums and slash or they consistently have the same running theme for a body of work. And when we see consistency, when the general, when a, when the person or the general public sees consistency, that translates to reliability. That translates as, oh, this person might actually be serious about serious about their craft. They might actually be someone that I would like to invest in. I'd like to invest in a follow, hit the follow button. I'd like to invest in showing uh, engagement with their posts. And of course, you know, I go to Instagram with my references here because I'm, I, uh, that's my, an area of my expertise also. Right. So I was just referencing, um, that platform, but however someone decides to support you because they see that you're serious and they see that you are worth investing something in. And of course, purchasing your art. Okay. So Here's the thing about being a general artist. I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this episode, I mentioned that I was going to share a story with you, right? How many of y'all, go on and raise your hand, raise your spiritual hand if you're driving, you know, keep both hands on that steering wheel is what I'm saying. How many of you told someone that you're an artist in your lifetime, you just, whether you said you like art or whatever, you made a reference to you being an artist, liking art, enjoying art, or having abilities, certain creative abilities as a visual artist. Okay. How many of you told someone that? And then they immediately, that person that you, you told immediately went to a medium that they are familiar with right? So you, in other words, you could, you could <laughs> be referencing that you just paint, right? You didn't say paint. You just said that you're an artist. And the person who you were talking to is like, oh my gosh, like, oh, I can't, I can't even draw a stick figure or, you know, oh, it's so hard to draw, you know, color with colored pencil. And you're just like, okay, not like you just stop. You're like, okay, we're not going to continue this conversation because clearly this person doesn't know about art, <laughs> about art right? <laughs> So I said that because we all have a different perspective or people have their own perspective of what art means to them. And you had mentioned that you were an artist or that you love art. And then what happened later on with the person that you told that to? Did they come to you? Did they come to you and say, hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do this uh, graphic design? Hey, hey, you said you're an artist, right? Can you draw a tattoo for me? And you're just like, wait, what? So I strongly encourage artists to proceed with caution with these kind of situations. You know why? Because you're going to drive yourself up the wall trying to satisfy people that you don't even really know, uh, trying to satisfy, even if you do know them, you're still seeking some kind of approval because you may have the desire to flex. You may have the desire to show off your skills. Um, give me one second there. Okay. You may have some kind of underlying desire that is selfish. It's for your own gain. Um, one second, y'all. I just had a FaceTime come in while I was recording and you know, I ain't going to stop either. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, all right. So anyway, um, yeah, you, oh gosh, I just got thrown off. I just got thrown off because that's face, the FaceTime was coming in, but, um, yeah. So let me go. I got, okay. I'm back on track now. So yeah, I, I encourage artists to just proceed with caution with those because with those kind of situations, because it's not necessary, or you have to ask yourself, is it necessary? Is it necessary for me to, and this is what I know artists experience. They, someone will approach and let's just say that artist paints, that artist paints, 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 paints all day, every day. Someone approaches them and says, Hey, can you, I know you said you're an artist. Can you do this graphic design for me? And it's on the computer. 
And that's not, that's like not their field. That's not their thing. That's not their interest. They have no interest in it. They have no interest in doing anything on the computer. Depending on that artist, on that artist situation, that's why I say proceed with caution because, hey, maybe you do want to make a few bucks out of this. And that's a whole nother podcast episode because I need for my artists out here, I need y'all to stop. Uh, I need you to stop starting on work for people without giving them a quote. You need to talk, you need to talk money. You need to talk about what they're going to pay you, when they're going to pay you, how you accept payments and what forms, how and when you accept payment, what forms of payment. Like you, you got to break it down to people because you have to remember that they approached you because number one, they don't know how to do it. And number two, who else are they asking? I mean, are they getting quotes from other artists? I don't know. I don't, I, I'm going to say probably not. Okay. Probably not. So you're somebody that they know. And if you do decide to take some of these jobs where you are now going into general artist mode, then you've got to be real about your time and your energy and say, okay, cool. You need um, a graphic done on the computer for whatever you need a logo. Y give me a month, <laughs> give me a month and give me 50% upfront. front. You know, I'll be more than happy to complete it for you. So I brought this up because this is a discussion that I've had with my artist friends um, so many times in so many um, instances. It behooves you because this, this is probably a segue into having standards because that is going to be another topic about how artists need to have standards. You should have standards. Um, but yes, you've got to have a standard and it, is it's only to your benefit to specialize in a particular area, even if it's at least for a certain body of work, even if you choose to specialize in a particular medium for two years, for two years, you're like, I'm just going to focus on this right now. You know what happens? You start to build the muscle. You start to have a form, a relationship with the medium, with the message. You start to see things every time you go back to, to the, to your studio, working with the same mediums, working with the same message, you're going to see, see it differently every time. That's the investment. That's the investment in, in focusing and being a specialist, a specialist on one, what? What did I say earlier about the doctors? A specialist focusing on folk, folking, a specialist who focuses on a particular part of the body instead of trying to satisfy the whole body. Come on, somebody drop a mic. Not oh, I'm not gonna drop this mic. I'm gonna make sure this mic stays propped up. Okay. So I encourage you. I implore you. Hone in if you're trying to sell your art hone in on being a specialist hone in on that y'all there are so many mediums like let's just go down the list right now and it was just so i can remind you pencil ink chalk oil tempera paint watercolor bronze ceramics marble wood photography digital photography there's so, and that, I'm not even, that's legit just scratching the surface. Y'all know there's so much more. And then we could get, y'all know, y'all know how we are. We get extremely creative. We'll like break a lamp and then make that some kind of art in some kind of way. Okay. <laughs> like just, it's what we do. Right. So I encourage you gain focus, hone in on what is the message you're trying to put together here? What are you trying to communicate? And what's the best way for you to communicate that message? A lot of y'all know who follow me on Instagram that I love roses. I enjoy roses so much that I don't even know why, but I, and now it's expanded to flowers. So if, flowers, period. Like I love flowers. Someone um, brought me some flowers about a week ago and I was like, oh my gosh, like I just love the flowers, period. <laughs> it's it's a uh, new, uh, I'll say a fresh appreciation for flowers that I haven't experienced in my life before. It just feels really good. Uh, but roses specifically, right? So spending the time using roses as my subject and really going into the feeling of painting that, feeling it in my heart space as I create that and creating it with watercolor ink specifically 
it just, I form a relationship with the subject. I form a relationship with the medium and I learn different ways to just become better at my craft. How can that be a disadvantage to you? Again, if you are generally enjoying art, I say do it because you generally enjoy it, but please own up to it. Please own up to saying, I enjoy expressing myself in whatever means I can. I respect that, most definitely. However, if you wanna, you wanna build that muscle, then specialize in an area, even just specialize in it, what did I say earlier? For a couple of years, you know, just, just try it. Build the muscle, become, become more of an expert in the medium because you're an expert in yourself, right? We just learned that. So uh, y'all make sure you click those links in the description below. Um, I have a complimentary coaching that is very limited, limited slots to actually get the complimentary coaching, um, but it is available to you. So the link is in the description. It is for qualified artists. Y'all know I don't have a conversation with an artist unless they are serious, unless they're an artist who is like, listen, I want solutions. I want to know how to next level myself because it's time. Like I'm tired of trying to feel my way in the dark. I'm tired of not knowing what I'm doing on Instagram. I'm tired of just not knowing I need answers. So if you are that artist, click the link in the description and sign up for my complimentary consultation. So much love. I appreciate y'all all day, every day. Y'all already, already know that, okay? And you already know what RTA stands for, but I'll tell you anyway. RTA stands for Respect the Artists. Love y'all. artists, creatives, and designers. It has been an honor and a pleasure to spend this time with you. I'm grateful for your encouragement, love, respect, and support. Follow this podcast and share this episode with another creative who needs to hear it. Your positive ratings and reviews are highly appreciated. Screen capture this episode, post it, and tag me on Instagram at dreamaloudart so I can show the love in return. For more information on having an artist consultation with me or for being on the YouTube show for artist interviews, check the description on this episode or go to respecttheartist.com. That's R-E-S-P-E-C-T-T-H-E-A-R-T-I-S-T-S.com. Much love to y'all. And remember, RTA stands for Respect the Artists. I'll catch y'all on the next episode. Peace, peace from here to the far east.